So this is the first time I have seen where there is fountain of fulfillment. <laughs> I had a fountain of love, fountain of joy, fountain of different things, but when I read it, I had to read it again. I said, fulfillment, fountain of fulfillment. So this must be something very special. I know that God will do something special in someone's life today to bring fulfillment. Real fulfillment. Some people think that fulfillment is in getting, but true fulfillment is in giving. That is why today, by the grace of God, we'll talk about how to receive the prophetic harvest. There are different kinds of harvests, but there is a harvest that comes by the spoken word, by prophetic force. And that harvest is clean, it is clear. There's harvest that is born of the flesh, and that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But when the harvest is prophetic, then it's born of the spirit. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And anybody who is interested in the prophetic harvest, who understands it and is interested in the power, normally that person will place a demand concerning the power because it is supernatural. It is not just an ordinary harvest. It's not just physical. It's not intellectual. It requires supernatural power, the power of God. So someone will receive both the understanding and the power today. Because I heard that you have one big building that prophetically you have broken the ground and that daddy himself came to break the ground. That means that place has to be filled up in the name of Jesus Christ. That must be why God is giving us this message today. Because I prophesy that you, in fact, before that place is finished, you would have had enough people to fill it up. Because that's what happens in camp. Any auditorium we are building, before we finish, the place is full. That place will be filled up before it's finished. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody call on God and say, Father, make me a vessel. Make me a prophetic vessel for the prophetic harvest. Please talk to God. Talk to God with all your heart. Lord, make me a vessel, a prophetic vessel for the prophetic harvest. I receive the prophetic power today to reach out to people so winning by prophetic force that by your power, O oh God, your word will go forth in prophetic intensity and bring souls to you Father, as we build this place, it will not be empty. It will be filled up. Filled with people who are fulfilled. Help us, O oh God. Help us, Lord Almighty. Glorify yourself in our lives. For you are our God. You are our King. We bless you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. You may be seated, please. When I discovered that our pastor's name is Daniel, I was sure that all the lions around have been neutralized. Because <laughs> you cannot have a Daniel and lions will be playing around. All of them, their mouths will be under lock and key. <laughs> so everybody is safe in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for mommy. They came to meet us at the car. So, and um, sometimes, you know, when you have delegations coming to greet you that are big, big people, you now start wondering, this there must be a big occasion. Because <laughs> big occasion carries big delegation. <laughs> so there are three things I want to share with us. And I'd like to share them in a manner that you will remember them for a very long time. 
three things. How to receive the prophetic harvest. From the beginning, when I say the prophetic harvest, someone would now be thinking, uh, well, what is harvest? Harvest, you plant something. Um, the thing is multiplied. Usually what you get at the harvest is more than what you planted. So we now add prophetic to it. That makes us begin to think uh, prophetic. That means that harvest is coming as a result of spoken word. That harvest is not coming just because somebody planned it. But because there is a word that is energized, that is producing that harvest, the word of God. Like Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, Hebrews 11 3 tells us that through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So God spoke the worlds into reality. He spoke, and I'm sure the one many of us remember is, let there be light, and there was light. Even that was how God spoke the earth into reality. Saturn, Jupiter, um, whatever, any name you, you want to call them, Mars, where some people are planning, they will start a new village. You know, <laughs> and they're already working hard on the spaceship that will be taking people there. They said, in fact, all they want is that man should be multiplanetary in, in habitation. We shouldn't live on this earth alone. I think they have known that the number of bombs we have can destroy the world like 2,000 times over and over. So they are thinking we should have somewhere else we can go to in case there's one crazy guy who presses the button and uh, before everybody is eliminated we have gone to the other place <laughs> you know man man can think can think very very intensely so there are three p's and i want to tell you before i even share the details how you can receive the prophetic harvest the harvest that is coming because there is a spoken word. Not because you see the physical reality, but because you're focusing on the reality of the word. And this harvest is not only in soul winning, even though we are majoring on soul winning, but it it's affects the, the marital perspective of your life. Something is spoken into your marriage that is a harvest. Maybe the fruit of the womb, maybe joy, maybe fulfillment, whatever it is. And as it is spoken, so you get into it and enjoy the harvest. It can be finances, just like when uh, our Pastor P.K. was praying. So he also talked about deaths being written off and so on. It can be finances. And when it is prophetic, it means the exponential dimension. That is when you multiply it and multiply it, just like the song. God does exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. Incidentally, that is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It would have been my favorite verse if not for John chapter 3 verse John, no, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. If not for that verse, Ephesians 3, 20 would have been my favorite. That God, that means that my potential is bigger than my prayers. Have you ever thought about that? Your real potential is bigger than your prayers. And your real potential is bigger than your imagination. Because when your real potential, your ultimate potential is based upon God, then there is no limits. Because God is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above. I usually call that divine tautology. When God starts repeating some things, it's not because he doesn't know what to say. It's because those things are so big that it's a bit difficult for us to understand. I mean, how can you be saying that my life, my real life is bigger than my prayers? When there are so many things I prayed about and I've not gotten them. How can you be saying that the ultimate level of my life is bigger than my imagination? Because I can even imagine becoming the president of America. I can imagine that. Can't I imagine that? 
I know some of you are saying it's impossible. <laughs> Please don't say anything is impossible on this earth. Don't say anything is impossible. Especially when you're bringing in the prophetic. <laughs> don't say anything is impossible. But your ultimate potential is bigger than your imagination. And that is the truth. So whether it has to do with finances, it has to do with marriage, or whether it has to do with our health, or whether it has to do with our ministry, with soul winning, whatever it is, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And then three ways to receive this prophetic harvest. You prepare, you prefer, then you pay. Three Ps so that you will understand. You prepare, you prefer, then you pay. You prepare by learning how to train your inner eyes. I will talk a bit about your inner eye and how you train your inner eye. Then you prefer the result that is prophetic even to the one that is professional. Because the one that is professional is very good. Look, if you want to really save money at the end of it and be fulfilled, get professionals to do the things that you are doing. Then they will do it so well. At the end of it, it's not when somebody, an amateur, has finished, you're not satisfied, you get another amateur who repairs one side and spoils the other side. Then you now get another amateur. You keep amateuring the thing until it nearly turns into an amateur. <laughs> so that when you get a professional, he may charge double what the first amateur will charge, but you will be so thorough that every time you come back and look at it, you feel so happy. You feel very happy. So but prefer, prefer the prophetic to the professional. Prefer the prophetic. If you want to get the result that comes from the prophetic, the prophetic harvest, you have to prefer it. You have to be biased towards getting it. And finally, pay. Pay the price. The price for the prophetic is within your reach. It's within everybody's reach. You see, the things that are most important, God has a way of making them available to everyone. In fact, if we had to be paying for air, I'm sure you know what would have happened. All the rich men would have had air tanks. Then they would have one long pipe connected to their nose. <laughs> and through their cars, still enter inside their car when they balance. In fact, the car will have its own air tank, everywhere air tank. But God knows that everybody needs air. And then everyone also needs water. Water is available to most people. So when something is very important, God makes sure that it's available. The price for the prophetic harvest is available to everybody. Everybody can pay it. And that is why everyone here today and everyone listening to me from wherever has the potential of receiving the prophetic harvest in any perspective, marriage, medicals, ministry, money, whatever perspective, in your career, whichever way, because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So I have finished the message. So those who wish to go now can go so that I can now start uh, teaching those who are interested in going further. <laughs> Because what I have told you is the summary of everything that we want to say. How to receive the prophetic harvest. Our text is in Matthew chapter 9, verses 36, 37, and 38. Usually I love to preach from one verse. But sometimes God makes me preach from more than one verse. One of the times I was very opportune to have gone to Ethiopia. 
and I was to speak three times every day for seven days. And the way God did it, he led me to one verse. So I stayed on one verse for the 21 sessions. And the verse had 24 words. Each word was a sermon. So when I finished, it was remaining three words. They say, well, can we have a session so you can just give us the summary of the three? <laughs> I said, no, what God did was that you should learn from the principle of how I developed the 21 and go and develop the remaining three yourself. I said, that's why it's still remaining three. So go and do that homework. So how to receive the prophetic harvest? Uh, Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes... The multitudes he saw, everyone would have seen the multitudes. He saw the multitudes, not just the multitude. When he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Not everybody felt the way the Lord Jesus Christ felt. He was moved with compassion on them because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Not everyone saw this. People saw the multitudes, different dresses, different hair, hair, headgears, and different uh, blazers, different shoes. They saw multitudes, everybody. Everybody just moving around, moving around. And maybe to them, they were even moving in order. But the Lord Jesus Christ saw them fainting, scattered, nobody really leading them. Actually, when you look with your inner eye, you find out that very many people who are moving about, moving about are actually dead men, dead men walking about because many are spiritually dead. But it takes somebody who has a prophetic perspective to view things before the person can see the way the Lord Jesus Christ saw these people here. Then he also said, a sheep having no shepherd. So he just went, everyone went whichever way he thought was the best. Then verse 37, then saith he unto his disciples. So not everybody had this one. The multitudes did not hear this. The harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. Not everybody had this. And it's a statement of fact. The harvest truly is plenteous. Even when people think the place is hard, when people think souls are not responding, when people think to make money here is so difficult, said, the harvest truly is plenteous. Then he now says, but, but the laborers are few. And then we, we look at verse 38. Pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Hallelujah. So, let's take the first one. How do we receive the prophetic harvest? And why do I call this the prophetic harvest? Because it's a harvest that is based upon a word. It is not based upon a work. It is not based upon intelligence. It is based on spiritual intelligence. An ability to see what others are not seeing. Others are seeing multitudes moving around. Everybody is moving, you know, one business or the other, one direction or the other. But prophetically, they were scattered. Spiritually, they were not moving in the same direction. They were moving in different directions. Each one just moving whichever way he liked. Prophetically. And then looking at them, you know, these people were Jews basically very religious many people would have thought that even if they had any problem it was not religious problem 
that the new God would have felt the new God. They say these people are scattered. Look at them just moving about as sheep, having no shepherd. Not just that, they 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 they, they are fainting. They are fainting because he says those that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run. They will not be weary. They will walk and they will not faint. But these ones are fainting. It's like they are not waiting on the Lord. They are waiting on something else. Maybe, maybe they understand the harvest, but they don't understand the Lord of the harvest. Maybe they understand professionalism, but they don't understand the prophetic. So this harvest is prophetic. And the greatest harvests are usually prophetic. They are not usually purely visible to everybody. So the Lord Jesus Christ has said it prophetically. And we can apply it to ourselves right here. That by the grace of God, if we talk about soul winning, that the harvest truly is plenteous. And it is plenteous in Jesus' name. That if we talk about finances, the harvest truly is plenteous. And it is plenteous in Jesus' name. Then if we talk about joy in our marriages, the fruit of the womb, or whatever we desire in our marriages, the harvest truly, truly, truly is plenteous. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. And we talk about healing. God Almighty is here. The one who healed the man at, 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 who stayed for 38 years at that pool. He is here and he will heal and he will make us completely whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Healing is plenteous. Whatever your desire is, whatever your longing is, God is here. He will do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work in us. According to the prophetic grace, the level of prophetic grace, the level of prophetic intensity. That's the way I'm I'm explaining that power according to the power that is at work in us. That power is like the valve. There's no limit to what God is able to do. But God is limited by whatever we have to carry it. The ocean, if they say go and bring water, there's no limit to how much water the ocean can give you. But if you go with a teacup, <laughs> they say go and bring water from the ocean. You go with a teacup. Are you going to carry more than a teacup? No, you carry a teacup. And that person says, see this one. He went with teacup. And he goes with a bucket. Has he done? Is it is he really fantastic? You're going to the ocean and you go with a bucket. You're not fantastic. Where well, somebody goes with um, a trailer. A trailer that has this type they use for carrying. You call it gas here. You know. Maybe the one and another person says, no, I want to build a rail line towards the ocean so that uh, <laughs> I'll just keep pumping <laughs> a pipeline. Someone, another one will say, my own is pipeline. Just connect pipeline, let it be flowing. You know. So God is bigger than the ocean, infinitely bigger. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think in any dimension of our lives. And when you view it from the, from the perspective of the spoken word, there is no limit. Because the spoken word created all the universe. The entire universe was framed by the word of God. And this same God says the harvest truly is what? Plenteous. So your harvest truly is what? Are you feeling sleepy? Ah. Because 1978, I went to one town, and when I got to that town, I was looking for the church to attend, and God showed me one church. So I went there. When I got there, the first sermon that I had the pastor preach, I said, this place, Anybody suffering from insomnia, that is, the person cannot sleep. If you bring him to church, he will sleep. Once, he, once that pastor, he, and his sermon starts the same way every Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come again together today. 
And you, are you not feeling sleepy already? Okay, I better change it so that you don't uh, sleep off. <laughs> so I served there for like three years before God now gave me permission to go somewhere else. You know, so I was just wondering whether that man's anointing was affecting me. <laughs> So what did we say is the first thing that we should do if we want to receive this harvest? Prepare. Wonderful. Hey, you are awake. Wide awake. Wide awake. Prepare. In your own case, which perspective is your favorite harvest that you are looking unto God for? Say your own aloud. Let's hear. Because with the heart, man believes. But with the mouth, confession. Because I had something like finances somewhere in the middle there. You know. So your own can be soul winning, it can be finances, it can be marriage, it can be healing, whatever it is. Uh, will someone be ashamed of his prophetic harvest? No. no. So which one is your own? Say it loud. <laughs> I'm black and proud of you. <laughs> Say it loud. Hmm. So you prepare. Prepare your inner eyes. The Lord Jesus Christ could see what the others could not see. All of them saw the same thing physically, but spiritually they did not see the same thing. You know, the occultic people will tell you that it's your third eye. And when they're talking about your third eye, they'll be hitting their foreheads. They say, your third eye, your third eye is here. So if you look from here, that you will see what your two eyes cannot see, your third eye. But your third eye is not really on your forehead. It's in your heart. It's out of your belly where rivers of living water flow. Ah, Mommy Daniel was uh, disturbing me today. What do you want? You want tea and coffee? You want water? I say, if you have living water, bring for me. Let me drink. Ah, can you be disturbing me? You won't let me rest. <laughs> Go and bring me living water. Let me drink. Since you must bring something. She said that one is from Jesus Christ. I said, okay, then just leave me alone the way I came. <laughs> so let's prepare. And to prepare has to do with your inner eye. In Ephesians chapter 1, if you take it from verse 15, if you like. In fact, I read the testimony that Kenneth Higgin prayed over Ephesians 1 from 15 to the end every day for six months and he changed his ministry. I read that in 1987. Then I also started praying on Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 15 to the end every day for six weeks. After that I wrote a book, a small pamphlet, 34 Ways of Hearing from God. Because while I was praying on it, one day God asked me, in how many days, in how many ways do you know my will? I started counting. I counted 22 ways that I can know whether something is the will of God or not. Please don't ask me to teach on that. Mm -hmm. Because I tried teaching on it every Tuesday and three years I didn't finish. So I now move to another thing. So later, I found out that as I did research on other people too, I found out that there were ways they were knowing the will of God that I didn't have the special privilege. I discovered 50 ways by which you can know uh, God's will. So when I wanted to write the book, that the other way he told me, 50. By the time someone has learned 24, he forgets the first 10. So because of that, I now summarize all the 50 into seven principles where well, it's on the internet if you want to download it so that one can save me teaching on it but i'm also encouraging you pray over ephesians chapter 1 verses 15 to the end and you know what what i'm sharing with us may sound to some people like a minister's uh, conference as if i'm speaking to ministers but truly i'm speaking to ministers because everybody in the redeemed christian church of god is supposed to be so serious-minded with God. We were told that when you lead somebody to Christ in the redeemed Christian church of God, you must continue to follow that person up until he becomes a pastor. 
When he becomes a pastor, then you are free not to follow him up again. <laughs> when he gets ordained, then you are free not to follow him up again. So all of you are potential ministers. And all of you, because as we will see, the price of the prophetic force is available to all of us. All of us can bring changes in our environment, in our marriages, in our finances, in our health, in our ministries. And as we talk about the new ground where we will build our uh, super cathedral, every one of us will contribute to it in the name of Jesus Christ. So you will bring people there so that it is full of people who are fulfilled. And we receive it prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ. So you prepare by training your inner eyes. He says, I pray for you that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened. That you may know what is the hope of your calling and God's inheritance in the saints and the exceeding greatness of God's power to us world who believe. It is when the eyes of your understanding are enlightened. The eyes of your understanding are opened. I remember when I was a student, the two main illustrations I will use for us were when I was not ordained, when I was just a student. They happened when I was a student. We went to Ghana, one country in Africa. We went there for a conference for 10 days. And everybody went to University of Ghana for that conference. That was 1975. And um, of course, some of the students were around, people were seeing them. But somehow, I had a friend who was my roommate, and I told him that it's like God wanted us to witness to the porters, the people in charge of who is coming into which hostel and who, who is going out. And he agreed with me. So we started going. All our break times we were with the porters. We were witnessing to them from hostel to hostel. When we went around the entire hostels, we started again. And then we visited some of them in their homes, and I ate different kinds of Ghanaian food. They, they, they gave me Ghanaian food. I was very, very happy. So we just finished, and then we, we left. Went back. I'm from Nigeria. So about 15 years after that, I was praying for somebody, a Ghanaian, who was doing his PhD, you know, and he came to my office to pray for him. So I told him that I was in Ghana in 1975. He said, what? 1975? He said, is it, is it possible you were the one they were talking about? He said, virtually all the potters in University of Ghana, Lagos, got born again in 1975. And that they said it was one Nigerian young man with his friend. In those days, I used to be much lighter. I have seen the sun. <laughs> <laughs> the sun has made me darker than I used to be. <laughs> so it was very light complexioned, and well, my hair has always been like this since 1970. So, and that he left fairly long hair, and he played the guitar. So I said, ah, that might be me, unless it's my twin brother. So I was very, very happy when they shared that. But it was because I could see what the others were not seeing. And God made the result to last. And I didn't hear about it until 15 years later. This young man uh, entered the university. He was in the uh, Christian Union. And then he did his master's there and came to Nigeria to do his PhD. And I just happened to be praying for him. And he shared that testimony. And I still remembered. And I still remembered one of the greatest miracles I ever experienced. One of the days we were to go, that my friend, I don't know what happened. It was as if he came under attack. His limbs were paralyzed. He couldn't move any. And he just could move only his neck. I said, Rajas, Rajas, I don't know what's happening to me. I said, eh, wait, let me go and call ambulance. Immediately, I saw ambulance. That was the imagination I had. 
He said, please, pray for me before you call ambulance. I said, okay. As I laid hands on him, what do you think I was imagining? Ambulance. You think I will stay here and lie to you? I will not lie to you. It's ambulance. And the prayer was very short so that he will not die in my hand. I just prayed quickly. and So as I was going out at, at the door, he just sprang up from the bed and screamed, Righteous, I'm healed. Righteous, I'm healed. Righteous, I'm healed. I said, what type of drama are you doing? Who are you doing drama for? So he ran and came and hugged me, but I noticed his temperature had crashed within five seconds. His body was so hot when I laid hands on him. But when he embraced me, his temperature had returned to normal. In fact, anytime we follow God, we obey God, we experience things that we didn't expect. That's why I tell you that your potential is bigger than your prayers. Didn't God do something bigger than my prayers that day? If I had faith in my prayers, that guy would have ended in the ambulance. Because that was where my prayers were seen. <laughs> but God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask and all that we think. And he will do it for you in Jesus' name. That's why I speak prophetically that there's a harvest in your life. A harvest of good, a harvest of joy. The harvest of breakthroughs in the name of Jesus, a harvest of healing, a harvest of deliverance, a harvest of soul winning in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I receive it. Say it again, I receive it. And say it again, I receive it. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. So you prepare your inner eyes. And then the second one. Do you remember what we said was the second one? Prefer. Ah, wonderful. This is a very wonderful class. <laughs> you must be prophetically biased. There was one day I saw how some, a human being could be biased. Uh, some people were chasing us. We went somewhere and we were throwing stones into a house. We were throwing stones. So the man, we didn't know the man was at home. So he opened the gate and just, so we ran, myself, my younger brother, two of our friends. We ran faster than those other ones. So we ran into the house and the other two were captured. <laughs> so when they captured them, they made them confess. They brought them to our house. So when they brought them to our house, my uncle came out very biased very biased uncle and they said ah we're looking for charles and sam we said looking for them for what he said yes they caught, they were throwing stones into a throwing stones where charles and sam that have been sleeping in this this <laughs> place this morning tonight was it in the dream they came out to go and stone your, your building? That man, in fact, I felt ashamed. <laughs> Even though he was defending me. And Heli said, no, we actually we went. We went. I said, how can somebody be so biased? He was so biased for us to protect us. Be prophetically biased. And when you're biased prophetically, it's truly yours. Not that my uncle's type. Oh. <laughs> Not that type. But truly. Because what the Lord Jesus Christ said was very correct. He said the harvest truly is plenteous. But the laborers are few. The Lord said the harvest is plenteous. The harvest is plenteous. When you are prophetically biased, no matter how hard the terrain seems to be, you are not moved by what you see. Do you remember that song? I'm not moved by what I see. Oh, you know it. I just wanted to test you. Don't worry. Thank you. You know, you know you've done enough praise worship for today. <laughs> I just wanted to test whether you know it. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm moved by what? 
the word of God. The word of God says your harvest is plenteous. That it is a prophetic harvest. It's the harvest that comes from God. God himself says it is plenteous. And when God says it is plenteous, it means that it is beyond the measure of man. It is plenteous. God says your harvest is plenteous. Financial, marital, medical, ministerial. Your harvest is plenteous. 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 Someone say, I receive it. Say it seven times, I receive it. 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 And it is so in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you're really longing for that you desire, where the prophetic has to work for you, today the Lord establishes it in your life Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. But you must be biased for the prophetic. That means you won't look at the things you are seeing. You're not moved by the things you see. I'll tell you another thing that happened when I was a student. It's not that these things are not happening now. But if I tell you they are happening now, you will say, after all, this man has preached. February this year was 51 years that I preached my first sermon. You will say it's because I uh, uh, um, ordained. I'm a general. Oh, I used to be a general overseer. I'm a general underseer now. <laughs> so, because <laughs> I handed over to another person. So that's what you will say. That's why I'm using illustrations of when I was a student. Just a young student. This one happened. There was something they called Operation Feed the Nation. So they sent us to some places to go and farm. So by 10 o'clock, our work was done. I had nothing else to do. So I started praying. And the Lord put it in my heart. I went with my guitar and visited all the old people who couldn't go to farm in that village. So as I visited them, I played the guitar for them, sang for them, and prayed with them, told them about Jesus Christ. And I also saw some that were sick. Some of them were healed. I prayed for some, they were not. But some were healed. But what was so exciting to me was that three years after, one lady came to do her youth call where I was working. And so she told me she was from that village. I said, eh? Ah. I said, that's wonderful. I said, three years ago, I was there. She said, wait, 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 wait. You were there? You came for operation Feed the Nation? I said, yes. And you used to play guitar? I said, yes. She said, hmm, you don't know what God did with, you, your, with your life. I said, what? I said, I just played for old people and sick people. She said, a number of those people, when they were dying, they said there was a young man that played guitar for them and that now they are not afraid to die. A number of them give their lives to Christ. I'm just a very young man, very young man. What I'm talking about is how many years ago? Well, 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 well a few years ago, nearly 50 years ago. <laughs> nearly 50 years ago. I was amazed. I didn't know that those things had such impact. That's why I'm calling this harvest the prophetic harvest. It's not just a harvest. It's a harvest that comes by the word and it's a harvest that is implemented by the word. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When it's born of the spirit, it has eternal value. It has eternal value. My friends who came to do Operation Feed the Nation, so of course I called them every night to pray with them. Some of them wouldn't come. They were busy looking for girls. Whereas the three months there, I didn't know that what I was going to do was something that three years after there will be testimonies. That's why I'm telling you that God wants to use your life. The price to pay is available to every one of us. And when you start paying it, you will see what God will do through your life. 
Because our God is a great God. So you prepare training your inner eyes. Then you prefer have a bias for the prophetic. God led me to, to, to pray and play and preach to those people who were old and who were ill. And I didn't know that that was the need of the hour. That was, to me, that was why God sent that team to that village. What was the last thing we said we should do? We pay the price. He said, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. Is there anybody who cannot pray? Some of us think that prayer is, in fact, there was a place that they told me that when they tell you to pray, they will bring two people who will hold fans. You know, we are from the tropics, so it's normally hot. That they will be, they will be, they will be fanning you and tell you, pray harder, pray harder. So you pray, you'll be sweating, they'll be fanning you. They'll be fanning harder, harder, harder. You'll be praying harder. You're praying harder. And normally it's salvation you are praying for. You are praying to get born again. So they'll be fanning you, one on this side, one on this side. As they are fanning you. And the, the terrible thing about that thing is, after they finish, if you, if you now, they call it praying through. When you now pray through, and you say, yes, I know I'm born again. And you get ill and you take paracetamol. You lose that salvation. Then you come back again. You have to start afresh. And you know, when you lose it once and come the second one, the prayer is harder than the first. So the two people will now find, find, pray harder, pray harder. Some people think that's what prayer is all about. But we are serving a gracious God, merciful God, compassionate God. Someone told me, I don't know how to pray. I said, but did you know how to talk to your father when you lived with him? He said, of course, my father, and I talk with him. He said, but God, I cannot see him. I said, just imagine that God is there. Close your eyes and be seeing him without seeing him. So just talk to him the way you were talking to your father. And later, you will know how to talk with him. You know how to talk and listen to him. And he will also talk to you. He says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. The harvest does not belong to you. It does not belong to me. The harvest is God's harvest. Even if you think about the finances or marriage or health or whatever, is God to God's glory. When God does it, it's to his glory. When you're thinking about reaching your family members effectively or your community members or your friends, your place of work and so on, it's all to God's glory. The real harvest is God's harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest. There's something I discovered that when you start praying for the harvest and God sees that you are sincere in praying for the harvest, you become one of the laborers. That's what I discovered. In fact, I have a testimony. Um, the president of our country before the present one, good luck, Jonathan, I preached for him maybe, okay, not to exaggerate, eight times. It probably was up to 12 times or more. And so some people thought I was a big man. It's just a secret, simple secret. When I was a student, I told you, this one, I was in secondary school self when it happened. I was praying. I used to be a sportsman. I just told Pastor PK's son, I think he's like nine years old or so, Matthew. How old is Matthew? Ten. Okay, so I'm correct. He's my friend. He's my age mate. So, yes, the Bible says if you don't become like little children, you can't make heaven. So you think I'm at your level? No, I'm at the level of little children, no. Because I have to, I have to go there, you know. So <laughs> the way you laughed made me forget what I wanted to say. <laughs> so I was telling Matthew that he will teach me Taekwondo, and then I looked and I told him, I said, you know, I used to be a sportsman. No? It's just that uh, it's like time has overrun that. I, I played for Nigeria. And he was looking at me. Eh? He said, but you teach me Taekwondo. He said, okay. Then after, when the younger sister, Anna Grace, saw that I was telling 
Matthew that he will teach me Taekwondo. She now came in front of me. I was like, hey, ho. Oh. So I said, okay, Grace, don't worry. You'll also teach me. <laughs> so that uh, it won't be that it's only Matthew that will teach me. She was demonstrating the thing in front of me. So that, uh, because that's how little children are. So that she too will be included amongst those who will teach this child such a one. So when I was playing, that, that particular one I was playing for one of the states, I would go under the terraces of the stadium to pray. That particular day I prayed, I remember, for four hours. I was in the secondary school. I had not entered the university at that time. I prayed for four hours. When I started, I had a voice that called the name of one of my seniors that he would get born again that day. So I said, eh. So I prayed for him for the four hours that he will get born again. So after praying for him, so I now went back. I used to hold a prayer meeting for all the sportsmen in the stadium. They would sit in the terraces and I would preach to them. One of the days, uh, the topic was, you are of your father, the devil. So when I finished preaching to them, I said, you are of your father, the devil. Many of you that will not come for this meeting. Today you have come, you are not running away. I thought they would come the next time. The next time they brought their friends. <laughs> they said, ah, what is happening to Charles? We don't understand though. Let's go and see. You know. So that day I met that man. His name is Obi. I said, Obi, you will get born again today. He said, He laughed. <laughs> Charlie, Charlie. <laughs> hey, Holy Spirit told you I'll get born again today, have you? I said, Yes. Whether you laugh or you don't laugh, today, you are getting born again today. So he thought it was a joke. We had evening practice because I used to play after the, we used to start practice at five, then we'll have a long break. Sometimes I'll miss my lunch in order to pray for the people. Because I'm telling you, prayer is available to all of us. That night, as we were about to sleep, <clears throat> I said, Obi, God said you will get born again today. You will not sleep unless you get born again. No. While I was arguing with him, some of the people said, Charles and Obi, what is the problem? Would you people let us sleep? What are you people arguing there? Then he now talked aloud. He said, it's Charles that does not want everybody to sleep. He said, I must be born again today. They said, born again for him. Let us sleep. One again for him now. Let us sleep. <laughs> so I did like this for him. Then <laughs> Tawao, I thought you were trying to be wise. So, incidentally, that night he gave his life to Christ. He finally became the chaplain of President Goodluck Jonathan. So anytime they had a special meeting, one of them, they brought the cardinal of the Catholic, the primate of Anglican, the primate of uh, Methodist, the primate of Presbyterian, they brought all of them, and I was the preacher. <laughs> I just wore one very simple dress that you would think I was just, uh, I came to help clean the chairs and preach uh, one of the most fiery messages that I ever had. So any special occasion, President Jonathan will say, what of that your father in the Lord? Let's bring him now. I like, I like listening to him. You know, just because there was a seed sown when I was a child and the harvest came. Let's rise up. The harvest is available to you. Please rise and talk to God and tell him, thank you, Father. Thank you that the harvest is available to me. I'm prepared by your grace, I'm prepared in my heart. And I prefer, I prefer the prophetic. Yes, Lord, I receive strength to pay the price. I receive strength to pay the price. I receive strength. Thank you, yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, glorious God. Thank you, Lord of hosts. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Please talk to God. It was laid on my heart, and I told Pastor Kunle, as we were coming, that he will pray an impartation prayer. He will pray that impartation prayer.
for all of us that God will grant us that prophetic intensity. So talk to God first and then he will come and he will pray for all of us that the Lord Almighty will grant us that intensity. Please talk to God right where you are first. Talk to God. Tell him, Father, thank you that I have the privilege. I have the privilege, the privilege, the privilege, the privilege. Talk to God, please. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. That you have the privilege, the privilege to serve him. Please talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to him. Talk to him. God will bring a special message in your heart. He will give you the name of somebody that you will pray for. And as you pray for that person, the power of God will work on them. It may be your relative, it may be your co-worker, somebody in your community. But talk to God. Talk to God. If it's your finances, this is the time. Talk to God. There's a harvest. That harvest is prophetic. The harvest is simply because Jesus said the harvest truly, truly is plenteous. Truly, it is plenteous. Souls who want to turn to God are many. The laborers are few. Finances coming into the church, so much. The laborers are few. Who know how to attract it? Joy in homes, healings, laborers are few. Please talk to God and ask the Lord to use you. Ask the Lord to use you. Pastor Kule will pray for all of us. So Lord, use me. Use me for your glory. I'm available for use. Lord, I prefer the prophetic over the professional. I look to the source, not the support. Dig a well, dig a well, and a hunger for you in my heart. Dig a well, Father. Lord, every opportunity I've lost, Lord, to pray, that will have brought me into the labor force. Every opportunity I lost, Lord, I receive a restoration of those opportunities. Doors you opened to me, accesses you gave me to people, to witness. Doors you opened to me, accesses you gave me to finances, to use for the gospel. Father, Lord God Almighty, I receive again in the name of Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Harvest plenteous, laborers are few. Father, Lord, thank you. In the name of Jesus, I begin to pray for my community. I begin to pray for my family. I begin to pray for my friend. I begin to pray for my neighbors. I begin to pray. Opportunities to sow a seed that will become a harvest in the future. A prophetic push that will move you to take a step in a direction you never knew before. You never thought of. It will be spontaneous. It will be inspired. Begin to receive in the name of Jesus. Pray, pray. Say, Lord, I receive in the name of Jesus. I surrender my heart to be ordered. I surrender my mind to be led in the name of Jesus. I surrender them, my heart, my feet to be ordered, my heart to be led in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, lay a burden of someone in my heart in the name of Jesus. Lay a burden for someone in my heart in the name of Jesus. The prophetic will come and give you a push. It will move you to territories. God is giving you an opportunity to drop something in the ground now. Bible says, if the earth, if the if the earth, if the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. Whithersoever a tree falls, whether to the north or to the south, there it shall remain. They are they, 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 the heavens are pregnant. There is a need for a dropping of the rain. But there has to be a prophetic release. Some word has to go forth. A word of commitment from you and will be backed up by a word of prophecy. The Bible says by a prophet he brought them up and by a prophet he led them in the way. God is taking, there is a shift coming. A shift is here. 
God is moving you to another territory, a place and a level and a, and a realm, a, a dimension beyond what you have known. Like the man of God said, our prayers can handle the imagination, the thoughts of God for us. It is way more than that, brethren. God's plan and purpose for our lives cannot be captured by our mind. It's too small, too infinitesimal to capture the infiniteness of the greatness of God's purpose for your life. But Father Lord, I join the workforce through prayer in the name of Jesus. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We will pray, pray for yourself. Your God wants to use you as a laborer for yourself. God is going to use you prophetically, seamlessly. He will push you to where supply is. He will push you to where help is waiting. People will be struggling to do the same thing you have been struggling to do for yourself. People will labor and they struggle. So practically fighting themselves to do it for you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray in the name of, I offer myself in the place of prayer. Every opportunity I've had, we restore, we receive a restoration in the name of Jesus. The Lord is telling me to tell somebody, don't feel ashamed. While the man of God was speaking, you were ashamed. God, the Holy Ghost began to bring to you sir, the memories of some of those opportunities he gave you. And you missed the time. Forget about it. Begin to move ahead. God is restoring you. The opportunities bigger than that are coming. Just move from here. The Bible says that there is therefore no condemnation. Unto them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. In the name of Jesus, don't be ashamed. Be full of joy. God is telling you, he is going to use you again. The ear will grow again. Samson's ear was cut, yours will grow again. His ear grow again, his strength restored. In the name of Jesus, the depth of relationship and fellowship, even much more than you have ever had you are going to receive in the name of Jesus thank you father I'm hearing a name Beatrice I don't know who Beatrice is I don't know if it is your first name or your middle name but there was a place of intimacy that Beatrice had with God and battery sold it like selling the bat right just for a relationship the relationship is not going well and Betty is crying to god lord don't look at me like this help me god is able to turn what is not to something great all you need ma just go back regurgitate what you have heard today Position yourself where God wants you. What you have been laboring to make good in a dramatic way, in a supernatural way, in a super, it is going to happen on a Thursday, in a supernatural way, you will see God handle a man that you have been trying to handle for so long and it's like it's been impossible. So you won't know how it will happen. He will weep like a baby, he would, he would drop himself before the feet of Jesus. And you will serve God together. The beginning of joy has come. To the glory of God. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Whatever has been hard in your life. Whatever has been held up. Whatever has been difficult. Receive grace to move forward on it. In the name of Jesus. Everyone in the house this morning. Everyone watching online. By the hand of the Holy Spirit. The grace. The amazing grace of God. The lift that up of our head the bishop and the shepherd of our soul wherever your feet have been planted where you need to move we give you aid we push you ahead in the name of jesus wherever your hands have been feeble your hands have been crippled let those hands come alive again the lord the same word jesus my father said unto the man with the withered hand in the temple say straight forth your hand every hand that is weak in working for the lord every hand that is weak in harvesting every hand that is weak is being productive in life in career be strengthened stretch out in the name of jesus every need that is feeble in the place of prayer every prayer altar that has run out of fire we ignite fire upon your prayer altar again in the name of jesus let your knees come alive let your joy in the place of prayer come alive in the name of jesus
I break the power of guilt over you. Amen. Father, the Bible says, and after you have taught them, Lord, you heal their sick. Mark 16, 20 says, and you great about preaching, the Lord walking with them. He signs and wonders, confirming his word. Lord, your word has gone forth today. We've been told three things to do. And Father, as an evidence of the power of the truth of the word, Jehovah, I'm asking that what they've been looking for all this while, because Lord, because we're going to prefer the prophetic, not the professional, whatever they've been looking for, I ask from this very moment, oh God, that that same thing will begin to look for them. Amen. This case that have been deferred and deferred, they keep adjourning unnecessarily, unjustly. In the name of Jesus, we begin, bring an end to deferment. Amen. We thank you. We give you praise. Whatever says you will not raise your head in honor, Whatever has made up their mind, whether celestial or terrestrial, that says that the Bible says, and I saw four carpenters. They came to repair the work that the horns have done to scatter in Judah. In the name of Jesus, every horn that has decided to keep your head down, that you'll not be able to raise your head in majesty and in honor. The Lord God Almighty sends the words against them today. The Bible says he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. He takes care of the wise in their craftiness. He carries the counsel of the forward headlong. They grope in the daytime as it were in the darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, everything that held you down, you be formed today. They go under your feet in the name of Jesus. May the Lord help you. Amen. When you see Jesus in eternity, you will not enter eternity with emptiness. There will be souls lined up behind you. So sorry, Master. There will be a work of service you, you will present to Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray.